But the fact that you're even saying that, how many more babies is Fondy expected to have? I mean, it's getting ridiculous <laughs> others, now. Others, Fondy, can you please have another five babies there so we, we can form fill out the national team? Fundies, please, team fundies. just call it the Fondy 11 <laughs> and have done with it. Now, welcome to the latest episode of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chehan Kyung. And here, Man, Man City fan and Singapore fan, obviously. Some more, Rangers. Some more Rangers fan. Some more Rangers, Rangers fan, man. Come on, you oh. Rangers. We have to qualify this because, as always, we thank you for all of the insane levels, oh. numbers of comments we're getting so now. When we first started out the podcast in the start of the season, we... It's all about EPL, right? Yep. We just, just kind of talk about English Premier League. Maybe we add a bit at the end about some things that are happening in Singapore and the region. And then guess what? Every time the comments come in, majority of them is all talking about Singapore football. Correct. How good it is, how bad it is, you know? Everything is about Singapore football. Most, 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 mostly talk about Singapore football. So much so that, you know, the last episode, obviously we talk about the SEA Games 7-0 trashing by, by Malaysia. Mm. They sent in essays, uh, theses uh, of yeah. how to improve Singapore football. Yeah, just one clarification yeah. on that. I know we look like it, but we're not actually academic professors. No. So I don't know why they're getting... Yeah. Like, like, we're going to grade like them on their PhD. 10 paragraphs in the YouTube comment section, 10 yeah. paragraphs of how to improve Singapore football. Yeah. Amazing. But it just shows you again yeah. the passion, which is... The paradox, isn't it? Or the dichotomy. See, I'm swallowing the PhD words now, <laughs> right? Because on the one hand, there's this myth that we don't care about Singapore football. But on the other, week after week, essays, comments, feedback. This poor man has been hounded for a week, which is why he's wearing his Sembawang Rangers t-shirt. Explain why. The last podcast that we had, I remember people tagging me, people talking to me, people were saying that, who is this guy wearing a Man City kit? And for the record, I did not wear a Man City official kit. That was a parody. What is this? It's an Oasis, Oasis kit, inspired kit. Yeah. So these comments were just going on and on saying that, for a guy who's wearing a Man City kit talking about local football, is ironic. Yeah. But I think when I came to the show, and I told you guys, I've always been a lapsed Singapore football fan. I grew up in the Malaysia Cup era. So, and when the S-League started, I supported my local team that time, it was Sembao Rangers. And I, till today, I really hope that Sembao Rangers come back to the league. But unfortunately, reality, we have to accept the fact that it's no longer possible. So, I think to put it on record that even though we were talking about EPL right now, Singapore football, I think a lot of football fans in Singapore, the local fans, we are really passionate about football. And I think we need to talk about it. This is the reality of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last week, we discussed the irony or the symbolism of the fact that <laughs> you couldn't make this up. If a Hollywood script writer timing, came timing. up with this idea to show the symbolism that Singapore will get whacked by Malaysia 7-0 in the same week that it's announced that Liverpool are coming to Singapore, you say, come on, that's too obvious. The symbolism is too obvious. But yeah. it actually happened in the week that we celebrated the festival of football, which is... Singapore losing 7-0 to Malaysia. We discussed the fallout from the SEA Games and the irony of Liverpool coming to Singapore, which will probably be a sellout, yeah. even though they're charging a couple of hundred bucks yeah. a ticket. You, you made a very good comparison that this kind of Liverpool uh, pre-season tours are like Blackpink concerts, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, people are going there just to film themselves, selfie with the, with the Liverpool players at the background. They don't care about the football that much, you know. It's just the they, 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 they are gratified that oh, I was there yeah. with the Liverpool team. Yeah. But like just as I was there with Blackpink. The, the performance itself is irrelevant. The performance is nothing. Good standard, bad standard. They'll pay hundreds of dollars for it. So that's the state of football yeah. fandom in Singapore. And not surprisingly, we got many, many comments. Many disagreed, some didn't. What were some we got? Okay, so we got this one from Zhong Han Lim, who said, We pay one of the highest premiums anywhere in the world for TV rights for the EPL and the World Cup and the Euro Championships. Everybody knows that we are the club's money-making machine. Absolutely true. Yes and no. In a way. Yes and no. Okay, I, I, I get the sentiment. I, I agree with the second part, that we're a, we're a club's money-making machine. But the first part, I think we've evolved that. Because of the new Starhub streaming 
platform. Finally, we've caught up with the streaming era. The days of expecting people to pay 200 bucks, 100 bucks for a cable TV package are dead. They, they're, they're gone, they're not coming back. The streaming generation, the YouTube generation, they want it immediate, accessible, and cheap. So I have to say that, what is it, 20 bucks, 25 bucks? No, no it's the early bird price, but it's now it's about... 25, right? Yeah. 25, right? So it's 25 bucks, all games, and just for the complaint, complaint culture here, just bear in mind, Singapore, Angmors don't get every game live in England. They get no Saturday games live at all. Not one. Not one of the 3 p.m. kickoffs are live in the UK. It's always been fixed. And their subscription packages are not cheap either. I think StarHub has overtaken Sky on this one. Sky Sports in the UK, BT Sports, are still subscribing to that very dated subscription model, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever it is, and people are not paying it as much anymore. Here, 25 bucks every single game. Good value. So that part, I slightly disagree. I think we have moved away from that in the previous days when we were being fleeced on cable television. We were. The second part of uh, Chong Han, I completely agree. Mm. Singapore is, uh, Singaporeans are still seen as gullible ATM machines. I've been writing this for years. On the plus side, I believe it's starting to change. I think if you look at some of the, the recent friendlies in recent years, we haven't just anyhow turned up, handed over our money, well, let's watch 11 guys pre pretend they want to be here when it's clear they don't and all that. Yeah. There's been a bit of a backlash. People are speaking up. We won't just pay 200 bucks to watch any old crap anymore. Those retirees, uh, those retired backlash. players, no more, no more. No, they won't accept it. So I do think it's changing. What do you think? I agree on that point because I think the fact that coming from the comments as well, mm. a lot of the Singapore fans are kind of understanding that, hey, you know what, we're not going to be taken for a ride. We're not going to pay extravagant prices to watch team who doesn't want to be here. It's kind of like a PR machine making a tour for them. So I feel that sometimes they feel that, you know what, rather than I spend this amount of money, why don't I save up? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be a long, tall order in that sense of trying to travel overseas to watch your favorite teams. But then again, it's kind of, if you can afford it, go. No one is stopping you. But then again, questions have been asked, like especially coming, the timing that that announcement was made was really coming at a very bad spot where, you know, every single time talking about the football in Singapore and then this happens, bad result, and then suddenly, voila, you know, fluff. And they call it a festival of football. We just got waxed <laughs> nil by Malaysia and they call it a and, festival and, and of and football. And the, the way the terminology is really like, oh, it's really God. coming out from a wrong place. Like, hey, this is wrong timing. This is super bad timing. Like festival of football and it's not even including the local football. You know, I, I remember when we had the Lion City Cup, when we had, you know, the, the national team or even the select 11 playing. But this time now, it's like, yeah, there's no, even, doesn't involve, doesn't the, national involve the national team at all. Yep. So, how does this help Singapore football? I mean, economically, yes, it will bring tourists coming to Singapore. But then again, football, I don't think so. Well, is... let us know what you think, as always. I do this twice in the local show because we get so many comments. Daryl, so I'm doing this for Daryl. <laughs> Send all of your comments. Are we being ripped off with the EPL tours coming to Singapore? Let us know at... Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter. Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Okay, Daryl, happy with that? <laughs> All right. Yeah. What else have we got? I mean, obviously, there's another person who also talks about the, the ticketing yeah, right. situation. Yeah. Nutty Shop SG say, ouch, the truth hurts. The irony is the tickets are so expensive that the organizers is pricing out many fans and football see. enthusiasts. Yeah, this is agree. Yeah. So, so we, they are talking about the festival of football, the prices, which start from $99 and all the way goes up to $300, uh, almost $300 for a ticket at the national stadium. So that's how that's the price you pay yeah. to watch your team play 90 minutes of low intensity football. Mm. A training session. Training session. So is is that some some people are already questioning is this really worth it or not? Yeah. Which is where I think the tipping point is coming in. Because teams coming to Singapore is not new. Nope. They've been coming here since the 80s, the 90s, right? They just didn't have this big festival of football crap it's, put behind it. They, you just keep on. I just can't, don't get me started on PR fluff. <laughs> anyway, so they, you know, that's nothing new. But they, it was just part of pre-season training. Handful of fans would turn up and so on. But now, because Singapore is in a 
kind of unique situation. Our venues are expensive to rent them, to hire them. I don't think anyone's getting rich out of this. Liverpool are not coming here for the money. They don't need it. It is a soft PR exercise for the club. We know that, right? But the national stadium is expensive to hire. So therefore, you've got to jack up the prices. Our music prices, football prices are always higher than everywhere else. We know that in the region. But this is the problem. Singaporeans now have this weird situation where they're playing twice as much as the real thing for a fake product, right? I checked before I came in here, the average English Premier League ticket in the UK, the average is 63 pounds, which is about 105 bucks, right? So to watch the real thing in a real stadium, high intensity in the UK, is roughly half the price of watching this one paced crap in Singapore. Where's the logic? Well, the thing is that you have to pay airfares to get to England mm. first. So th yes. a, lot of, a lot of readers actually put in, the thing, put in the thing, this thing that's, you know, we need to pay, we don't need to pay airfares, we just need to pay the ticket price here. Okay. But, you, know, you are getting second rate, third rate kind of football. That's true. Which comes back to the black pink argument yeah. that it's not about the football, is it's it? It's not about it's football. It's just, I saw them. Yeah. It's just that. I was, right? I was there. I, I, was I was there. I saw them. Then it's not about the football. Don't, don't even call it a festival of football. Just call it a festival of celebrity. It, it feels very. It feels very corporate. If you look at it, like I, I remember the olden days of when this European team comes to Singapore. Then they play the national team. You know, and I think it, in a way it helps the national team because there is this competitiveness that the national team players can meet players of. European caliber players, you know, and, and it's really a bad, you know, it's like for them, they, yeah, they, may, they might come in as a free season friendly, but for the national team players, they would definitely, you know, I'm going to step up my game. Yeah, that's, See how, yeah. that's true. No, but now it feels that, number one, there's no, ex, uh, there's no inclusive of the national team. So, footballing wise, it's never about the football aspect. It's just a festival, it's kind of like, you go to a concert, you know, you go to an F1 concert, it's just a showcase. There's, it's not the full experience. Yeah, but when and then you're the... paying, but then you're paying the price of a full experience. Correct. But you don't get that full experience. That, that was the point. But in fairness, when you go to the Formula One, it's not a festival of Formula One, is it? <laughs> this is a festival of football. It's not a festival of Black Pink, is it? So there you go. They must be doing something special. A festival of football. Oh, never live it down. <laughs> Honest to God. Uh, okay. What else have we got? <laughs> okay, we'll we will do one more. Um, I think. Obviously, the seven 0 trashing by uh, by Malaysia and uh, Sea Games is hurt a lot of fans. So this this guy, he made the I tell you, he, he just written the best description of Singapore football right now. Okay, Mister Confederal said, "That's uh, no go cast G. Okay, go cast G. I said, go go Singapore football is like an ailing patient in a coma, and currently on life support. Nobody dares to come up with radical ways." of treatment for fear of aggravating the condition. They would rather hope that this patient come out of the coma by himself and gradually becomes better as he's able to breathe by himself again until someone decides to uproot this patient and transfer him to another hospital for a second opinion, he will most probably succumb to fatal complication, wow. complication as a result of prolonged intubation. This, this Singapore is... football follows this same fate. Because the level of indifference is the same. Oh. Wow. Fact, right? For this go kart, yeah, yeah, for this go kart SG, uh, you got to give credit reasons, that he yeah. managed to kind of like type it out like word for word. So yeah, I think he, he was dying to write <laughs> this thing out. That was a, I told you we have theses, we have essays. That see? was a festival of academia, man. Oh, you have festival again, you. Desperate. No, but he's <laughs> right. He's actually right. It's a, it's a really profound point. The bit I particularly like is when he said they would rather hope that this patient comes out of the coma by himself That's right. and That's gradually right. becomes better as he's able to breathe by himself again. But I would go one step further. I would take the PhD one step further oh. and I would say, we put the patient there in the first place. We're the one who whacked the patient. You know, we whack the boys, we whack the young lions, we whack FAS, we whack this, we whack that, we don't support. Then once the patient is in the coma, yes, we just them stand them. over and go, okay, get better. get better, get better. <laughs> get better. We don't do anything, we just get better, we just whack, 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 well, see, I told you you're dying, I told you you're dying, but we put you there in the first place. <laughs> We're the one who whacked you there with our indifference, our lack of interest, our lack of care, and then only, like you say, when the patient is on life support, which is C Games, 
or when we fail again to qualify in the World Cup qualifiers, every two years we come out, Facebook, whack, 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 then disappear again. So I think it's a brilliant analogy, but I would just go one step further and say we, as a culture, as a lack of football culture, we kind of put the patient in hospital in the first place. What do you think, lapsed football fan? We shot ourselves in the foot yeah. with that. Uh, the thing is that the support just went down. And I think that culture of like, we are always going for glory, you know, when the Singapore team does well, everybody wants to be associated with it. But then when the national team fails, regardless of whatever level or whatever ages, just no, cut, the yeah, ties. cut the ties. Like, nope, it's not my problem. Nope. And it's always passed the buck like, oh, it's not our fault. It's not. Our fault. And I think, like I said, we are trying to be very critical, but we, we want to be critical because we want to really see that change. Yeah. You know, I, th I read the article yesterday was that, I think the Sea uh, Games chief was saying that, oh, we had an internal review, you know, of the FAS. And the stopgap measure is that, okay, no competitive uh, matches for the national team. Does that help? Mm. No, it doesn't. Because, because the, in a way, it's kind of like the cancer cells are still there. And it has been there for the longest time. But yet, we are not looking at ourselves and instead, we are just pushing the buck everywhere else. Like, oh, no, it's not a problem. No, it's not a problem. No, it's not a problem. Yeah. Then how do we solve it? And then that, that situation where football fans, like myself, like, we have, this problem has, it's not new. This problem has been there for the longest time. Which comes back to Hank Yong's yeah. point, which he often says on, on the podcast, was, is there the cultural and societal will, political will as well, to actually say, this is our national sport. This is what we need to do about it and this is how we're going to do it. Is there even the will at this point? Do enough people even care at this point? Which brings me nicely to another comment we got from Confederal, thank you Confederal, who says, there's been a trend in argument recently that we should scrap our football altogether and pour more resources into other sports where we win medals regularly, like table tennis, swimming, and so on. He says, that's a no, why? because we want to excel in all sports and not just scrap the sports we are good at. Funding should be proportionate to the popularity and difficulty of the sport. Stop comparing it to individual sports and other sports where it's not so popular. The funding requirements are so far apart. So what he's basically saying is we must fund all sports. We shouldn't just pick the ones that are successful and we should fund them based upon their popularity. I get the point, but there's a real chicken and egg element to this, isn't there, right? Why should you fund something if the local interest isn't there? I just saw a beautiful film uh, by Jason Tan. It's on uh, YouTube, you can watch it. It's called Homegrown. I watched it yesterday at the Singapore Heritage Fest. And it's about six or seven teams, just fun amateur teams, friends, cuckies playing together, at different places around Singapore, right? All ages, all races, they're just getting together to play for fun. One plays at Buangkok, one plays at Salita, one plays on top of a car park in Chinatown, one plays on the void decks around Sarangoon and Haogang and so on. And it is the most beautiful, poignant film you'll ever see. It was filmed in 2016, what are we now, 23, so it's only seven years ago. Half of those places are gone. Half of those playing spaces have already gone. I know Buangkok has gone because I live there, right? It's gone. So Buangkok has gone, the Salita one has gone, I think the Sarangu one has gone, and so on. Is there really the political, societal, and cultural will there? Or do we just want to build more HDB, more condos, more BTO, more blah, blah, and so on and so on? If there's no will, then to come to Confederal's point, why should we give funding? If the will is for swimming and table tennis and not for football, why should we keep giving taxpayers dollars? Exactly. That's why, I mean, um, and football, you need that big a space. And exactly. In, in our place, in our, in our island, is such a small, limited space. Everybody's you know, competing for that big amount of space. Um, and, you know, swimming or even table tennis, you don't need that big a space. And then obviously people will... No political will or whatever will there is. They're, they're obviously, Singapore is a very you no know, realistic and efficient place. They'll look out for the best kind of sports which you know can support and you know there's enough place for for them to grow. But 
that's that's not the same with football here. That football is a that's a dilemma. That's a situation. That yep. that and you know, and that's why that's why we need we we. We need to ask ourselves at this point of time: uh, Is it is it continue to worth that level of support anymore? Do we, does do 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 you know Singaporeans want this kind of football to carry on to 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 become good again? Is there is there a will in the Singapore to do so? And increasingly, I feel that that you know people people are willing to ah we can carry on do do some other stuff you know that you know it's it's hard to say you know in, in the 70s and 80s football was you know the passion everybody was doing it and and everybody everybody likes doing it but now we got so many other distraction so many other things for us to do to either to for our recreation or for for you know for professional for our enjoyment it's got very hard to unite the, the country together again for that collective will to push a sport out of the doldrums. So the question is for all of us before we wrap this up, is football even worth saving? Is Singapore football even worth saving at this point? I'll go, I'll go first and say I'm biased, but yes, because if you watch that film Homegrown, I almost had a tear in my eye because I don't believe, call me biased, there is any other sport that gets close to football's ability to bring people together. There's this sweet uh, taxi driver in the documentary. He's now 70 plus. He's still going down and playing with his cuckies. And they're half his age. Every weekend, they play, they talk cock, this and that. You can't do that on a tennis court. You can't go, how's your day? Good? Yeah? Okay. You can't do that in a swimming pool. There's hardly any other sport. Netball, you can't really do it. You can, I suppose, other team sports. It's not the same. It's the only sport that we can play across ages, across races, from any background. You just need a little bit of space. That's the clue. We don't often have any. But you just need a little bit of space and a ball and you play. For that reason alone, of course we should. And last point, another film he made, Jason Tan, was the 2007 uh, ASEAN AFF match between Singapore Thailand the last full house that the old Kalang Stadium had it was spectacular it was spectacular it was full they were cheering it unites the nation like nothing else not even National Day Parade which upsets them because it's true right nothing unites a nation like it's national sport nothing and to see them celebrate like that 60,000 at Kalang was beautiful, but the thing was, it didn't feel like a different decade. It felt like a different century. It felt like the thing should have been played in black and white. But for that reason alone, I'm biased. We should still try to save the local game. For me, definitely. I've always, always, I mean, as long as I love football, I think Singapore football, we still can save it. This sounds like very political. Like we, still, we shall save football. No, but then again, if you look at it historically, like what you mentioned, football is the national sport that can unite all races, all gender. You know, there's no discrimination in that sense. You know, you can, I mean, growing up, you can play football anywhere, you know. Mm. Even if the void decks, you know, like basketball court, even the street soccer, no, you can play football anywhere. Yeah. Maybe a dead end, dead end road uh, in one of the streets, in one of the private you can you can play football there. No one's stopping you. But the problem is that the identity, the culture is that now we make football so clean, so prim and proper, to the point that people who does not understand the passion of the game, will they be able to relate? That's the problem. And unfortunately, and I, like I said, we have to be critical. Are the people running the association understands how is the groundwork? Mm. Because you see, the thing is that right now, you, you don't have, you can't play football in the basketball court. You can't play football at the void deck. The street soccer courts that I grew up, is no longer in existence yeah. because the idea was that no one uses it. But then again, because we have made football so Supreme and clean and proper, there's no grittiness in that playing in the football on the street. Yeah. And how do you how do you grow that national football? Like, I think I spoke to us before, you know, like people are competing to play for pitches, 11 aside, 5 aside, streets of, uh, you know, those cages kind of. Era. And you have to pay. And you, in a way, you, you deprive those who are not able to afford that luxury to play football. Mm. And it becomes like, there's no difference to people playing tennis or golf, mm. you know. I, I joke with my friends. Might as well, you know, we just scrap football and then we just play checkers. Yeah. You know, have a competition, you know, just play checkers. You know, yeah. So what do you think? Hmm? What do you think? 
wrap it up. Worth saving? Wrap it up. I mean, it's worth saving because there's such a long history and heritage that, that you need to... You, we cannot let it slip away just, just like that. There, there must, must be some fight. Uh. We need to at least try to get back to our top. And maybe if, if let's say, if we really, really cannot, then let it fade off slowly, but never give up. Uh. Never, like, like, never give up. Never give up. Like Mohammed Salah. Party the political. This <laughs> political rah rah P A P. Don't cancel me. We agree. <laughs> well, what do you guys think? It's your turn now. We sh we pass it over to the floor. Any questions from our wonderful audience today about Singapore football, uh, regional football, the future of Singapore football? Any questions for us? Just raise your hand. Don't be shy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. the microphone down here to our young gentleman here. Yes, sir. Okay, good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> so, uh, it's 2023. We have how many? Nine clubs that, that compete in the Singapore Premier League. Say five, ten years from now, do you think we can get to 15 clubs and at least 12 of them will be local clubs like Sembawang Rangers, Woodlands, Wellington? Oh, it's possible. Oh, this one I think making gonna, a comeback. This, this one I think we'll disagree. I think no. I think we shouldn't because we're not big enough. I, you may disagree on this. Mm. I have always believed, I've said this since the inception of the S League, the now Singapore Premier League, I think we made a mistake from the beginning, and I've been writing this for 20 plus years. We don't have a cultural or spiritual or geographical connection to hardly any of our local clubs. Here's one you did, Sembawang, Woodlands. What we should have done, in my view, from the very beginning, was have two core clubs in all four regions. Two from the north, west, east, south. So eight clubs maybe. So you keep your Tampanese and your Geelong for the east, you keep your Sembawang Woodlands for the north, you keep Clementi and whoever else for the west, Tang John Paga for the central, and that's it. Uh, and, and then who else we've got? Topayu is Ballastir, right. and you build over time. You can't have all this half past six, Marine Parade, Marine Castle, Senkang, Dolphin, whatever, no. Six to eight core geographical teams that you build over time and be patient with them, like the J-League model, 100-year plan, except that in the first 20 years, it's not going to work. But we can't do that because we're too kiasu and we're too impatient. But if we'd have just stuck with six to eight core teams, geographically placed, home stadium, home crowd, build, 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 I think that's the way. 12, 13, 14, 15 teams, to me, that's nonsense. We're not big enough. If you want to talk about an ASEAN Super League where two of your best teams go into, I'm okay with that. But to me, six to eight teams. Okay, I think if we look back to the original idea when the S League started, that idea was that every constituency will have one club each. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why if you look at it when you know we had the Northern Derby where Woodlands and Sambawang. And I remember, because I, I speak from experience, because I was there. I was at Yishun Stadium watching the games every time. And the stadium was full, you know, 2,000. And it's still a good... It's because a good, it's authentic. It's, yeah, it's authentic. It's good crowd. So I'm wondering to where I am right now. How did we, from there, we just went down to... No one cares about... To the point that we had to have a revamp of the S-League. So I feel that when we had that clubs being connected to their communities, then you have people who stay in the constituency will say, oh, like, oh, this is my local club, you know. Just come down, you know, like, and tickets were cheap. Yeah. So it's like, it's no loss. Like, I just throw $5 or $10 to watch a game. I just sit down, just enjoy nasi lemak or just enjoy whatever it is. You know, and it's a community thing. And I feel, like I said, the reason why I'm wearing my Samoan Rangers jersey is because I speak from experience. I see. Yazi Yasin's family, the former goalkeeper for Singapore, his family came for every game. And it's not five people. It's like one busload of family members. So it's, it's, it's more than a community thing. It's like when you talk to your, you know, like your son or your, your kid, no, come, join daddy, watch a game. Mm. Watch a local game. And it feels very authentic. And I think that culture somehow or other just got lost in trans, transition somewhere down the road. Where we, you know, like we were talking about, oh, why do why, why we care about the EPL so much? How do, how do we need to care about the league when there is no process or infrastructure in that sense? And, and coming back to the point, like I said, it must start from the top. If the top doesn't show this, then it's very difficult for you to read because at the end of the day, there's so much red tape, you know, like the clubs have to pay rent to the stadium and then you cannot develop the community. And how does it go? It's, it's going to be that vicious cycle, unfortunately. 
And I think for me, I hope that we can have that culture where we have 12 teams in the league. But realistically, I think what Neil says is going to be very difficult because where we are right now is really very difficult. I think more important than teams, you need players. So my wish list, actually my hope is to get all the Fundy brothers back into playing in the Singapore Premier League. Yeah. Iksan and Irfan come out, come back from BG Patum, from Thailand League, come back to Singapore. And then with uh, Irf, uh, Ilhan and uh, the last one. Iksan? Iksan. The, the, no, no, yeah, uh, the yeah, younger one. Irfan, A1? A1. Irfan, Irfan. Yeah. Irfan. Okay, so all four play. You know I, I, Oh, you know, I mean, the, 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 the players, the group is more about the good quality of players in the league rather than the number of teams. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. But the fact that you're even saying that, how many more babies is Fondi expected to have? I mean, it's getting ridiculous <laughs> others, now. Others, uh, Fondi, can you please have another five babies <laughs> so we can, can form fill a out team, the national team? Fondies, please, team Fondies. just call it the Fondi 11 <laughs> and have done with it. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, any more questions from you lovely audience today? Right, no, I think we're done. Then uh, if you have any comments, queries, suggestions about the next Fandi 11, please send them all to... Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Thank you, Hi Zam. Thank for you being for with us me. today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all, all, all wonderful audience. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you Thank for you your support much. all season. Thank you for your support. Stick with us and thank you. You give us hope for the future of Singapore football. Keep watching and we'll see you all again same time next week. Thanks and take care. <laughs> hey. It's always one.